Is the material world the only real thing that exists? Or is there more to reality that meets the eye? In the beginning of the 20th century, many physicists thought that the completion of physics was near, and we could describe reality as fundamental, tiny bits of matter going around in an empty void and everything emerged from that. However, the discovery of quantum physics changed this view of reality to something more bizarre. I will argue in this video that using facts of quantum physics, the most parsimonious view of these facts will lead one to an idealist picture of the world. From the days that quantum physics began, there has been much debate about its philosophical implications. Two views emerge from this. The first view is quantum non-realism, which says that reality is dependent on, on observers. Quantum non-realism implies an idealist view of reality by denying there to be an objective physical world that is outside and independent of experience. Since quantum non-realism is observer-dependent, then observation is about experience, and a conscious observer having an experience of the system will cause it to collapse. Quantum non-realism, on the other hand, says that reality is, is observer-independent, and would exist outside and independent of experience. So, quantum realism would imply a non-idealist picture of the world, given that it posits hidden variables or some other artificial collapse mechanism as the reason that quantum physics acts in the way it does, rather than consciousness or experience. So now the question is, which side does the evidence favor? Well, for starters, recent loophole-free verification of Bell's inequalities has shown that no theory based on realism and locality is possible. Furthermore, a recent confirmation of the cochin specter theorem shows that no non-contextual theories are compatible with quantum mechanics. Additionally, the last testable loophole was closed, therefore ruling out all testable hidden variables. This means that if realism is true, then it, this only leaves a limited number of hidden variables that are compatible with quantum physics. So, hidden variable theories have to postulate extra theoretical entities that are not grounded in empirical observations and are unnecessary for predictability. And furthermore, they cannot be tested through experimentation. We addressed hidden variables in a previous video, so we will not go over other additional problems here. The point is that hidden variables become ad hoc on closer inspection. All of this implies the most parsimonious view of the world is that reality depends on observers. This data has been going from several studies which show that reality depends on observers and not some hidden variables in nature. Now, some try to argue that decoherence and interaction is all is one needed to explain the wave function collapse. However, this argument is refuted with experiments like the interaction-free experiment, where the measurement detects the position of a particle without an interaction occurring between it and the measuring device. The quantum Tajir cat experiments where particles are spatially separated from their properties. And finally, even non-local delayed quantum eraser experiments where the measuring devices are separated by several kilometers. Furthermore, interactions create a chain that eventually go back to a constant observer. This implication just cannot be ignored by saying that it stops at the first interaction. The same quantum rules that make up a wave function apply to the measuring apparatus. So you need something else to collapse that measuring apparatus and so on and so on. You keep going back until you get to something that is not bound by the same quantum laws. And the only place to actually stop this chain would be with the one who is ultimately performing the measurement, which is the conscious observer. Now, some try to say that this is only true for the quantum world, but not the classical world. Pragmatically, this is true, but it doesn't change the fact that the classical world is built from the quantum world. Furthermore, there are still decoherence effects that create the classical world. Under idealism, it is the conscious observer that is doing the decoherence, and not hidden variables or something else in nature. Since the conscious observer is the one performing the measurement, then it is the one doing the decoherence in the first place. In fact, if idealism is true, then the world we experience would be the emergent construct of conscious experience. We will delve more into emergent space-time in a future video, but we can infer that consciousness creates reality from these facts. Now, what about those that take a pure pragmatic approach, where the wave function is not itself real, but only a mathematical tool to describe our lack of knowledge about reality? Well, this view has been experimentally challenged recently, and it gives more weight to views which accept the reality of the wave function. Now, wouldn't we be tempted to ask, if this is the case, then how do we all live in the same shared reality? After all, if consciousness creates reality, then why do we all agree on the same observations, and why can we not control reality? 
Well, the fact of the matter is that we all share the same reality, but this reality is not an objective world outside of consciousness. Rather, the external reality beyond our own minds is also mental in nature, being within universal consciousness and not just our personal mental states. So, there is still an, an objective world out there, but this reality or environment is itself mental. Given this inference, it's clear that we all share the same objective mental reality, and our perceptions of the physical world are simply the decoherent effects between this external mental reality and an observer's own mental states. The reason that we cannot control reality is that we are disassociated alters of universal consciousness. These alters will interact with each other, thereby creating decoherence effects, which in turn creates the classical world we experience. So by conscious agents interacting in the same universal consciousness, each alter reflects the presence of other alters, thereby explaining our perceptions of the physical world. Living organisms are the extrinsic appearance of alters. Furthermore, the external world would be information, and the ontological ground for information is the qualities of experience. Not our experiences, but the experiences or thoughts of universal consciousness. If this is the case, however, then this would apply that everything is mental in nature, as Benoît Katsip explains. Whenever the case, under the relational interpretation, the physical world is perception. Therefore, it is determined by sensory state S, which in turn is codependent on activity state A. The next step in this line of reasoning is inevitable. The physical world is the Makov blanket. Everything else that is wave function and R is non-physical thought. It is the interaction between wave function and R that produces perception and thus the physical world. Only states S and A of the Makov blanket are physical states, for only they are compromised in the physical world. Since all states in figure 3 are ultimately patterns of excitation of universal mind, physical states represent but particular classes of mental states, namely perceptual states. Another class is exemplified by states wave function and R in which constitutes a pure thought. So while discernible from each other qualitatively, both physical and non-physical states are ultimately mental. So, given all the evidence so far, there is simply no reason to accept a reality beyond consciousness. Idealism can solve the measurement problem and other paradoxes in quantum physics without being ad hoc or invoking hidden variables. Under an idealist framework, there is no measurement problem in quantum mechanics. We should not modify quantum mechanics to make it consistent with one metaphysical view of the world, rather we should modify our metaphysical view of the world to make it consistent with quantum physics. Physicalists have tried to modify quantum physics in order to make it consistent with their metaphysics, but this creates many problems and has the unnecessary baggage that comes with hidden variables. Idealism, on the other hand, has taken quantum physics as it is and makes sense of the world through that viewpoint. Therefore, it is the burden for the physicalists to show that there are hidden variables in nature, or for that matter that there is a reality beyond consciousness. Because what, from what quantum physics tells us, there is no reality beyond consciousness.